as I worked to bolster my courage over the following year. The old toy maker laboured on the greatest of his creations, and he completed it for Annette's 18th birthday ball, which was much the same as the year prior, but for one event. Old Geibel brought with him a clockwork man. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you my new friend, Lieutenant Fritz. The clockwork man dipped his head sharply to acknowledge the crowd. Good evening, Lieutenant Fritz, at your service. <laughs> Just a minor adjustment or two, yes, sir. Uh, which one of you ladies will be first to dance with him? He keeps a perfect time, never tires. He won't tread on your toes, and he will hold you only as firmly as you desire. <laughs> he will delight you with gentle conversation. He can't be everything you say he is, Uncle. Faith approached the mechanical man and gently stroked his metallic cheek. Oh, but he is, dear cousin. Though he is neither flesh nor bone, in one way he is superior. He cannot suffer the torments of a broken heart or love's lost. Oh, perfect indeed! <laughs> uh, yes, uh, thank you, Faith. Uh, step up, Annette. I stand just here. Uh, his timing and gait can be adjusted with these knobs, and the strength of his hold is set with this lever. He is the perfect dancing partner. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see, old man. Sirs, a waltz! Old Geibel set the knobs and tripped the final switch. The clockwork marvel stepped toward Annette and bowed eloquently. May I have this pleasure, miss? Lieutenant Fritz took Annette into his arms and began to dance in perfect rhythm. Oh! I... Oh! Oh! Yeah, he will take you in a circle. Uh, be careful that no one knocks against him as it will surely alter the course. <laughs> Apprehensive at first, Annette began to enjoy herself. Oh, right. This is... Oh! He is wonderful! I think I shall dance for the rest of my life! <laughs> How charming you look tonight. Your gown is beautiful. You look lovely. I could dance forever with you. Other couples joined them on the dance floor, and I turned to find... Mr. Brown, isn't it? Why, yes. Hunter Brown, yes. The fates had smiled upon me at last. Miss Geibel, may I have the pleasure of this dance? I would be delighted, Mr. Brown. We seemed well suited. Faith even appreciated my ill attempt at improvised humor. How well our steps agree. You look perfect tonight. I could dance with you forever. <laughs> <laughs> could you? Could you really dance with me forever, Mr. Brown? <laughs> <laughs> we continued the dance with nearly another word, until one of Faith's pink hair ribbons fell onto my sleeve. Rather than taking it back, she gingerly tucked it into my coat pocket. Oh, I've lost the ribbon. I'm no longer perfect. My apologies. I promise to overlook the flaw, if you can overlook mine. Are you flawed, Mr. Brown? They say love is blind, especially when it is true love. And I shall never love that one. I knew at that moment I loved Faith Geibel. But my infatuation was interrupted when I spied Felix Benzel he slyly approached old Geibel. I overheard him. Uh, Geibel, uh, you have heard in private, sir. You are mechanical marvel, so enthusiastic. He <laughs> conjures up possibilities from which we both might profit. Oh. <laughs> A shrewd businessman, her Wenzel guided old Geibel from the room as the clockwork man continued to whirl in that around the floor. Even after the music stopped. Oh, poor dear. Annette has fallen asleep. No, I believe she has. <laughs> Annette had ceased to carry her own weight. She hung limp, feet dragging the floor. 
that she fainted. An expanding patch of blood had begun to seep through the fabric of her dress and prompted pandemonium. Ladies, please get back! Men, stop this monstrosity! One man, two, then three together, tried to stop the clockwork man, whose twirling momentum repelled him like ragdolls. Old Geibel ran back into the room and onto the dance floor. No! No! His attempts to disengage the mechanics of his creation failed. The floor had become slippery with the net's blood. Geibel slipped and was knocked unconscious by the creature's outstretched arm. The clockwork man's hold tightened around the net, crushing her. Having seen the area that Geibel had tried to reach, it was I who caught onto the metal man's back. Holding on with one arm, reaching round the other, I found the lever and pulled. All gawked in disbelief as there stood the two, inanimate clockwork man holding lifeless Annette. Annette's suffocated, crushed body slid from her partner's loosed embrace onto the blood-stained floor. Uncaring and unaware, that metal statue stood motionless, innocent of any intentional murderous malevolence. A sour end to what all thought would continue as an annual affair for years to come. How fleeting life can be, how swift its end.